you just joined us on the system after dark. This is a homegrown number, courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of today's hit music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. This is FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. In this bulletin, Prime Minister nominates Labour Minister Chiochi Konrote for presidential position. President Ratue Peli Nalatikau calls for an end to social ills. And thousands attend Fiji Day celebrations around the country. Minister for Employment Major General Chiochi Kondrote is Prime Minister of Rengembani Marama's nominee to the office of President. Kondrote has had a long and distinguishing career in the military and served as a diplomat and senior civil servant. He has been the only Fijian to be appointed as the force commander of UNIFIL and UN Assistant Secretary General. Baini Marama says with his more than 41 years of service to Fiji and the Fijian people, Major General Konrote is a paragon of loyalty, courage and devotion to duty in his performance as a military commander, honesty and dedication as a senior civil servant and minister, and tact and perseverance as a diplomat. Baini Marama will be nominating his name officially to the Speaker before the sitting of Parliament on Monday. President Ratue Peli Nailatikau says Fiji has received international recognition in a number of areas such as raising awareness about the effects of climate change and our peacekeepers serving overseas. In his address to the nation, Ratue Peli says, on this occasion of celebrating Fiji Day, it is also important to recognize our nation's flaws and weaknesses and rededicate ourselves to rectifying them. Ratue Peli has called on all Fijians to address and curb serious problems like race rape, suicide, domestic violence and corruption. All this is a blight on our nation's reputation that we must simply confront. We must put an end to the hypocrisy of a society that professes to be religious yet turns a blind eye to too many instances of ungodly behavior. Rato Epeli's term in office ends next month. It was a sea of white and blue in the capital city today as Fijians took time out to celebrate Fiji's 45 years of independence. Akusi Tale was at the celebration and filed this report. <laughs> took to busy Laudala Bay Road this morning with various government ministries, schools and NGOs turning up in numbers to begin the day by marching from Watuanga Primary School to Berkers Park. This year's celebration marks 45 years of independence. It's my identity, it's who I am, and it's the country that I love, uniting all Fijians together. Today it's like uh, bring people together and then uh, make us together. This is where we all get together. It means a great day to remember how Fiji started and all those many different things. It's a day that we celebrate our Independence Day and um, it means a lot to our citizens because it's uh, what we achieved. Fiji day today is our day. For celebration of Fiji. Speak of the House, Dr. Chiko Luveni reminded Fijians to be proud of how far we have come as a nation. Citizens were reminded Fiji has opened its arms to other races and made its presence felt in world forums on issues that beset us as a small island nation. She adds recently, Fiji stamped its mark on sporting fields at the Rugby World Cup in England. It is a collective call to rise above our differences and to focus on our similarities as we move forward. It is a significant call to our nation and people to be relevant in a world of change. Thousands turned up this afternoon to witness the 21-gun salute and parade by the RFMF, which are a tradition on Fiji Day. 
Received by Prime Minister Vorenge Bainimarama, this was also the last Fiji Day parade for President Ratu Epele Nailatikau before he retires from office next month. Akusita Tale, FBC News. Celebrations were also held in the Western Division. Local Government Minister Parvin Kumar visited patients at the Lautoka Hospital Children's Ward and residents of the Golden Age Home. Thank you. <laughs> Minister Parveen Bala took time out, spending the day chatting, handing out gifts and making the day a jovial one. Children were treated to cake and other confectionery. For one special baby, it was double celebrations. Happy birthday to you. Selina Naisema, after life-saving surgery, marks her first birthday today. We want to thank the doctors and nurses for their hard work and for looking after my daughter that enabled us to see this day. Kumar also paid a visit to elderly citizens in Lotoka, people who've contributed their time and energy to the country during their younger days. Fiji Day means to me, it's a very precious day and uh, Good for gathering together, sweets, all the things. I'm very touched. And this morning when I visited the Golden Age, uh, it was a very emotional uh, moment for us. Uh, and I think this sort of uh, gatherings and this sort of visitation makes a lot of difference. And I was quite happy while talking to them. Come tomorrow, Fiji will mark 45 years of independence from British rule. <laughs> Edwin Nant, FPC News. There was a huge turnout at Sabrell Park in Lombasa this morning for the celebration of Fiji Day. The crowd was reminded that while we work towards a better future for Fiji, we should not forget the struggles of those who help make Fiji what it is today. Eleanor Tarangaiview has the story. Hundreds of students, civil servants and members of the public started off the Fiji Day celebrations in Lambasa this morning with the march from Wai Corner to Subrail Park. Chief Guest Lands Minister Merisei Wanga reminded them that Independence Day should be a time to also reflect on our past, what our young democracy has overcome in the last 45 years. As a nation, we have gone through a lot since the change in our political landscape in 2006. But we have shown great resilience by overcoming many difficulties associated with this change, something Fijians are known well for throughout the world. Uniwanga says we should draw inspiration from the struggle of men and women who have helped mold Fiji to what it is today. They have shaped and continue to mold our lives, thus shaping the destiny and future of our beloved country. Today is a day to think of the sacrifices and commitment that they made to ensure that we live a better life today. Today is a time to look forward to our future. I believe we are on the threshold of achieving even greater things. Fiji Day will be commemorated with a public holiday tomorrow. Eleanor Turangiview, FBC News. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has issued a congratulatory message to Fiji on its 45th independence anniversary. Sending the message on behalf of President Obama and the people of the United States, Kerry says the U.S. commends Fiji for its continued work to strengthen its institutions and create an open, democratic and prosperous society. He adds the U.S. recognizes Fiji's tireless efforts to contribute to global security and highlight the challenges of climate change. Kerry expressed the U.S.'s firm support for Fiji as its citizens strive for greater peace and prosperity and wished a success to Fiji in the future as we work together to build a vibrant and dynamic community in the Pacific. French President Francois Holland also sent a congratulatory message addressed to the President. Holland said the excellent relations between Fiji and France was recently demonstrated by the signing of the agreement on the delimitation of our respective maritime zones. He says cooperation between the two countries continues to strengthen and today it covers many projects in education, language, science, academia, culture and art. Holland says this partnership should be further developed, especially during the upcoming France-Oceania summit in Paris 
Paris in November 26th, where Fiji's presence would be very much appreciated, as well as the climate conference on the 30th of November. Still to come on FBC News, Vunda residents complain of increased crime rate in their community over the past few months. Gold FM only the classic hits, beautiful song from the group Firehouse and When I Look Into Your Eyes. Before that you heard from Smokey Robinson with One Hot Beat. We'll take a short break and join us in the next hour for more music from Seal. Bula I'm DJ Tora. Join me every weekdays, 7 until midnight on the Premium Classics. Right here on Gold FM, only the classic hits. Police have released the names of three men wanted in connection with the ANZ Bank robbery at the Nasori Airport on the 28th of last month. Wanted are 29-year-old Eli Tia Vuivunda, also known as Vus, 21-year-old Mesake Sinu Lelewasa, and 24-year-old Penive Sangai Matarai Vula. Chief of Intelligence and Investigation ACP Henry Brown says the three were allegedly involved in the bank heist where $54,000 in foreign currency was stolen. Matarai Vula is also wanted for his alleged involvement in a robbery case in Visama, Nausori in July. The three are considered to be high-risk criminals. Anyone with information is kindly requested to call 9905-618 or 9905-337. Residents in Vunda outside Lautoka are concerned with the increasing crime rate in their community over the past few months. They held a meeting with senior police officers this week to air their grievances. Madhi Mbolai Tamana reports. Residents here have had enough of the growing number of burglaries in their neighbourhood. Uh, it's good that we've been able to have this meeting this evening as a concerned citizen and one that's had our uh, private residence broken into uh, four times in the last several weeks in this area. Um, it is really important that we get together and emphasise to the authorities what is happening here. In some instances, thieves broke in and stole items while the occupants were asleep. Other properties were targeted when the homeowners were away. The meeting with the Divisional Police Commander West, Marika Koti Suba, last night was to highlight the plight of those constantly living in fear because of the robberies. Special effort to sort these cases out here. They were putting in a, a, another task force here, commander in at the police force in at Latoka, and uh, uh, it sounds very positive and we're all looking forward to getting um, a result uh, that will decrease the crime here. At least five homes have been burgled in the last two months. Thieves making off with electronic items such as smartphones and laptops. Divisional Police Commander West Marika Kote Suba says a team led by Lotoka Station Commander Henry Steele has been tasked to investigate the crimes. He said increased police presence in the wider Vunda area will be employed to curb the crime rate. Madhim Bolitamana, FBC News. More people will be able to easily access medical services in their own communities thanks to the launch of the National Mental Health and Suicide Prevention Policy today. The Ministry of Health, along with other non-government organizations and partners, gathered for the launch of the much-anticipated document in Suva this morning. Ellen Stahls reports. While launching the policy, First Lady Andy Koila said, apart from improving medical services, the Ministry of Health has put suicide prevention high on the priority list. It will provide improved services to our citizens who are unfortunate enough to suffer from mental health illness. Superintendent of St. Giles Hospital in Suva, Dr. Penny Mbukoto, says the policy seeks to provide help to people suffering from mental illness and also generate more awareness on suicide prevention. In the policy also there's a focus on prevention. Eh? Uh, prevention by identifying uh, high-risk uh, populations, eh? uh, populations at high risk of uh, developing uh, a mental illness or substance abuse, eh? uh, and uh, putting together uh, pre prevention or educational uh, programs. Eh? The First Lady also strongly drove home the message 
that being diagnosed with mental illness is not the end and that there is life after this but more support is needed. Research and statistics tell us that most people do recover from mental illness if they get support. And this is very important and this is where we are all required to give assistance. This policy is to provide that support. In 2014, St. Giles Hospital recorded 450 admissions and more than 4,000 visits in the outpatients ward. From January to June this year, it has seen over 216 admissions with more than 2,300 outpatient visits. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Terry Walk in downtown Suva will be undergoing some changes soon. A pavilion will be constructed in a few months' time as a gift from the Chinese government's Overseas Chinese Affairs Office of the State Council to the Chinese community in Fiji. Julie Vatwaliwali with this report. The Terry Walk and Cummings Street beside it was a business location for the early Chinese settlers in Fiji. Here, the pavilion will be built to commemorate the 160th anniversary of the Chinese settlement in the country. While we have different ethnic groups with diverse cultures, we pride ourselves that we are a harmonious, multiracial, multicultural society who call Fiji our home, and we are all proud Fijians. Speaking through an interpreter, Overseas Chinese Affairs Minister Chu Yingping says she is overwhelmed by the contribution the Chinese community in Fiji has made towards local economic and social development. I hope generation after generation, the Chinese in Fiji will bear in mind the spirit of fortune ahead and continuously strive for the social and economic development of Fiji as well as China-Fiji bilateral relations. In welcoming the construction of the pavilion, Foreign Affairs Minister Inoke Kumbumbolo says the solid structure literally demonstrates the solid foundation and principles of the two countries. You are a small community but with a large heart for this nation. This pavilion will not only demonstrate to this generation the rich cultural diversity that exists in Fiji but will be a beacon to the next. The pavilion will be a visible monument to add to the landscape in the capital city and will be a popular meeting point for tourists and the people of Suva. Julie Vatuwaliwali, FBC News. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Thanks, Jackie, and good evening. In sports after the break, hundreds turn up to welcome flying Fijians back home. And Leon and Akarao to compete for a spot to the Rio Olympic Games. This and more coming up. Choo choo! 14 eh? 20 ka dikhna hai. Main hu na aapke saath mein Mirchi FM par 9 se 12 baje tak Monday to Friday. Mirchi, it's hot. Hundreds of people turned up at the Nandi International Airport this morning to welcome the Vodafone Flying Fijians back from the Rugby World Cup. While the majority of players returned to the various clubs in Europe, a handful made the journey back to the country, including Nemani Nandolo, Ben Volovola, Leone Nakarawa, as well as the entire coaching staff. Charlie Ndaudakadaka has more. The Flying Fijians received a large reception at Nandi Airport today as fans welcomed them back from a tough but impressive outing at the World Cup. In welcoming the squad, Fiji Rugby Union reaffirmed Rugby House's intentions to keep John McKee as coach. Fiji Rugby Union has a contract in place with um, uh, Mr. John McKee, who signed last year and it uh, goes for four years. Eh? That's in keeping with uh, the sort of uh, thinking that's now uh, prevailing or starting to happen in Fiji Rugby Union for us to... Uh, have a long-term view of things. Yeah. McKee once again credited the players for giving 100% effort on the field throughout the competition. You know, in terms of the effort the boys put in, and not just in the games, but in, in the whole the whole preparation cycle and 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 the work they put in to, to get to where we were at the Rugby World Cup was fantastic. You know. The players dispersed right after their arrival, as they were mobbed by their fans and family members looking to reward the players for the sacrifice and commitment over the past two months. Silent Otakavaka, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, flying Fijians lock Leone Nakarawa has shown interest to join the Vodafone Fiji 7 squad for the Rio Olympics. 
Nakarawa was already on Ben Ryan's wanted list for the 2016 games and has now declared he is ready to compete for a spot. Ben then giving me, giving me a chance and opportunity. I think I'll, I'll go for it. I'll uh, train hard and, uh, and uh, try to get picked for the for next year's Euro Games. Nakarawa is currently based in Scotland playing for the Glasgow Warriors. The bar football side has qualified for the semi-finals of the court's inter-district championship after defeating Rewa 2-0 last night. Laisenia Raura and Avinesh Swami scored a goal in each half to see the men in black and Lambasa qualify from Pool B. To their own territory has play gone now 40, uh, 41 minutes. 41 minutes of play and Avinesh Swami takes a shot and a shot from outside the box. And in the 41st minute of play, again Simi left to try and catch the thin air. And even though Suva thrashed 93 nil last night, both sides have qualified from Pool A. Madhi Undunandamu was the toast of the capital city side, scoring a hat-trick of goals, allowing Suva to secure a second spot in the pool behind leaders Nandi. Lambasa is ready to step up its game for the clash against Nandi. The Bambasing Lions are still reeling from a loss to Nandunga, but are focused on its semi-final clash with the Jet Setters. We have prepared well so far for this tournament and hope everything will go well. We are, I think, sit I think so, we are prepared for the semi-final against Nandi. In the first semi-final tomorrow, Nandi takes on Lambasa at 5 p.m., while Suva will face Mba in the second semi-final at 7 p.m. The final will be held on Sunday at 4 p.m. The Nandi Blazers women's rugby team is confident of a strong outing when they make their first ever appearance in the Central Coast Sevens in Australia this month. Coach Leilani Burns says they will be banking on the experienced players to lead the charge against formidable opponents including the Australia and New Zealand national sides. We've got two players which were in the uh, Fijiana squad previously. Um, we've also got some, uh, a lot of our players who are in the extended squad for both 15s as well as the 7s extended squad. So we're taking a lot of those players with us when we're going across to uh, compete. That was your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. Westpac Bank has opened its rebuilt and modernized head office in Suva. The facility was launched last night by President Ratwe Peli Nailatikau. Bank General Manager Adrian Hughes says the investment makes the flagship building one of the best in the capital. Westpac House is a heritage building with its history dating back to pre-colonial days. Hughes says they're proud to employ majority locals in all their banks. The Suva office serves about 3,000 customers each day. A fine day across Fiji today with only a few very light showers reported from eastern centres. In temperatures, Savo Savo and Suva recorded temperatures of 26 and 27 respectively, while it was warm in the west with Nandi at 30 and Ba hitting 29. Up in the north, Lambasa was warmest at 31. We can expect tomorrow to be just about the same as today, generally fine weather with the chance of light scattered showers in the east. And for Sunday, the weather is expected to continue to be generally fine. At sea, a strong wind warning remains in force for all Fiji waters. Recapping the main stories tonight, Prime Minister nominates Labour Minister Chiochi Kondrote for presidential position. President Ratu Epeli Nailatika calls for an end to social ills and thousands attend Fiji Day celebrations around the country. This week's poll question, we're asking, do Fijians show civic pride? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Ni Motamamba.